Tighten your seat belts. We are almost ready to land. Let me summarize what we learned with the help of an example. Let's take the example of curating learning resources for English language learning. We can start a curation journey with an algorithmic filter like Google. We can search for a phrase like learn English and then skim through the results. Remember, skimming and scanning is a good strategy when you are starting your search, but it is not a good cognitive approach when you are studying for deep understanding. Since I am doing this search in London, Google is showing results that are related to my location. I could have clicked on some of these links and then skimmed through the sites which appeared. However, let's filter our search further. We could check YouTube or we could click more and go to the videos tab. Here we could search further by using filters like the search tools tab. Within the search tools, we have these options. And for example, if I select any source, then it shows me the source of the video. So I've got British Council, BBC, Kaplan, and so forth. Or I could have looked at duration filter, where I could have selected short videos or medium uh, time videos or more than 20 minutes uh, videos. Or I could have looked at let's say the books filter. Here, Google is searching this phrase learn English and looking for books with this phrase. Now within the books tab, I can again look for search tools. And this time I get tabs like any book where I can look for free ebooks, for example or I could look at any type of document where I could segregate between books and magazines or I could look for recency or again I could sort the results on the basis of relevance or date. As an aside, suppose you were doing some research, say research on behaviorism versus cognitivism as the learning theories and how they evolved over time. You could then use a very interesting tool that Google provides, which is called the Ngram Viewer. In Ngram Viewer, you type your search term and this tool searches millions of books starting from the year 1800 for the term you're looking for. So if I search for our two terms, cognitivism and behaviorism, Google is showing me the results for behaviorism in red and for cognitivism in blue. And it's showing me that the word cognitivism started appearing somewhere around 1915 and this is how its popularity has grown in terms of in how many books it the, the word appeared in this time period whereas the word cognitivism is coming more like 1953-54 and this is how its popularity is growing i can then look for books within any of these time periods so for example, if I'm looking for behaviorism and, and books in the period 1800 to 1932, then I click here and I get all the books which were published during this time period, which had this word behaviorism. Also for this type of search, you can use another Google tool called Google Scholar. So if I go on the more tab, I don't see Google Scholar here. So I click even more. And here I get scholar. When you search in Google Scholar, you are searching only within scholarly publications. And you can also see how many times the source was cited to gauge its importance. So for example, if I type behaviorism, then I know that this particular resource has been cited 294 times. If you want to cite this source, Google conveniently generates the proper MLA or the APA citation for your bibliography. You click on the cite button and the citation is generated here, which you can then import into your bibliography manager within Microsoft Word or other tools. Coming back to our example of language learning, let's now use social filters to curate some good resources. 
we could have searched on websites like Dig, which is a social bookmarking site, or other social bookmarking bookmarking sites like Reddit, StumbleUpon, some of the stuff that we touched during the presentation. However, right now, let's try a different approach. We will go to a curation website like Scoopit and then search for the phrase learn English. So I go to the Scoopit website and I say learn English and I see these and I see these search results. So for example, if I click on learn English language online and when I search for this term, I see that somebody has already curated some good learning resources on English language learning here. I could then skim some of this and then whatever is relevant to my target audience, I could check out those resources and then use it in my curated list, duly acknowledging the source from where I, I got the lead. We could do similar search on other curation websites like Learnist, Pinterest, or you could also try searching on Twitter and Facebook. You could even try a website like Quora, where not an algorithm, but a fellow human being will respond to your query. While you are on your curation journey, don't forget to add the knowledge gems that you find to an organizer like Digo or Evernote. This is my account on Digo. I have several areas of interest and if I find good resources on a topic of my interest, I add it to my appropriate Digo list. For example, creativity, critical thinking, enlightened parenting, financial literacy and so forth. While I was preparing content for this workshop, I was adding good resources on content curation to a new list on Digo, Art of Content Curation. These are the links that I found useful and I have curated them here on this list on Digo. Once you have curated and organized your learning resources, you can share these resources with your learners and start your learning community. Hope that gives you an idea of how all the pieces of content curation process come together.